Okay, this is where things get really exciting. We're going to take a look at the project settings and the options that are available to you. So in this opening screen, once you've restarted your app, click Create a New Project. And in this screen, give your project a name. I'll call it New Demo. And click on the blank project thumbnail. Make sure it says an empty project down here. That means that you've selected it. And click on the Create Project Now button. Okay, so now we've got a blank project. If you go up to the project, actually, first let's make sure we're all with the same workspace. So go to View, Workspace Layouts, Compact. And then I'm going to go ahead and unpin my Properties Inspector by clicking the little pin here in the upper right-hand corner of it. And that's where I am. So if you want to follow along, that's how I got this particular configuration. So we're going to go under the Project menu and we'll take a look at these first three options here window settings audio settings and startup movie let's click on startup movie for now it's pretty self-explanatory to play a startup movie that's an introduction movie for your application you would click this box here play startup movie and then you can choose a video file or a flash file and you can click on the browse for icon here and select your file from either your gallery your system or your project. Your system is your main hard drive, so anywhere on your hard drive. Um, in this case, we'll go from the gallery. We'll take the Magnolia video. It starts previewing, but I just sort of clicked OK. And uh, here we've got some choices. We can set it to go full screen, uh, custom size, or size to our project, or size to the media, sorry. That's the size of the video file, which in this case is 320 by 240. Um, and the media size, the video itself, we can adjust here. We can play it back at double size, half size, custom size, fit it to the window, and so forth. And the style area here, we've got options to add a border, a title bar, and allow click to skip. So if people click it, it will skip the intro. This is handy if people are watching your presentation um, more than one time. For example, if it's a sales presentation, you might want to make sure this is included and maybe even put a little label on there that says click to skip. You can also set the background color. Um, in this case here we'll leave with that video full screen and we'll change this to 200 percent. Okay and then we're going to press OK and we're actually going to go and preview that together now. To preview press F5. We'll take a closer look at previewing and publishing later, but for now, that's all you need to know. Just press F5, and you'll see what happens. Now available in the Main Street you probably can't see the video because of the screen cap um, utility that we're using to make this training lesson, but you see a black square there. That was the video playing. It's very hard to screen cap live video. But suffice to say that that was the video playing. As you can see, it played, then it stopped, leaving behind our application here. So if I actually show this over the desktop, you'll see that it left behind this application window. Okay? So that's the introduction video feature. And I encourage you to fool around with it a bit and uh, set up some flash movies and whatnot and see how, how it works and if it works good for your projects. It works excellent for certain types of projects. So best to know where to use it for maximum impact. Okay, so I'm going to go back and switch that off and press OK. And we're going to take a look at some other different project settings. Just to make this more exciting for now though, let's go ahead and add an image to our page background by going to Page, Properties. You can also double click on the page to get this dialog. And then selecting Background, Image, and then we'll leave it set to fit to page from the options here. You can also tile or play it at actual size. Put the photo that is at actual size. And we're going to go into our browse for file here. We're going to click to get to the highest level of the gallery and go into the abstracts folder here. And let's see what we've got. I'll just take one at random. That looks kind of nice. Some kind of purple silk. So let's put that on there. There we go. It's a little more exciting. What we're going to do next will sort of fit into that and it'll look really good. So let's go into our project, audio settings, and we'll take a look at these two tabs. Here under the sound effects tab, you see that you can set up default sound effects for your objects.
for example, buttons when you mouse over and click them, etc. And you can now actually set the volume for those too. So the volume goes from 0 to 255. We'll leave the default sounds here and the default volume. Under our background music tab, we've got an opportunity here to add a series of music files, one or a series of music files, and play them back sequentially or random, and also set up the volume and the looping feature here. So let's go ahead and click on the Add button. And if you're not already in this folder, you can make sure that you're in the Liquid Cabaret folder of your gallery. Or you can select a file from your system or project folders too. But we're going to select from our gallery, Light and Pretty. So we double click that to add it. And you could actually preview it in the last window if you like, or in this window by selecting it and pressing the Play button. So we've got that music added to our page. We're going to leave it to loop and we'll set our volume actually down a little bit. We'll set it to 200. This is between 0 and 255 incidentally. And since we only have one track here, we can just leave the play mode alone. So let's go ahead and press OK. And now when our application is run, we're going to have background music. So we'll look at the last project settings area here that we're going to examine in this lesson, the window settings. So we went to project, window settings, and this is a pretty exciting area. We'll first take a look at the advanced tab. The advanced tab has a memory management feature, and I recommend you leave it on automatic. That's what I actually do all the time too. But actually, for advanced users, you can take a look at the maximize speed and conserve memory features here. Okay, so let's go back into the appearance tab. Here we've got some really great options. You can set your window title. So I'm going to set it, but we're not actually going to see that at runtime because we're going to add a custom mask over here. But um, if your project does have a window title bar, this is the text that will appear in there. Okay? Um, from the page size presets, you'll notice that there's a variety of different presets. When you select them, it changes the dimensions here in the width and height area. So it's kind of handy just to have these on hand we're going to select the medium size which is the maximum recommended viewing size at 640 by 480 and we're just going to leave these values that it's at 630 by 425 but you could actually type your own values in there if you like okay the next area here is the options area we've got movable we're going to leave that checked that means that your application is movable by the user it won't be fixed on the screen in one point we've got an always on top option if you check this, your application will stay on top of all other applications. When they're opened up or when you switch to their windows, they'll stay underneath your application. This is handy for certain applications, but in general you'll probably want to leave it unchecked, so we'll leave it off. The custom icon allows you to click on here and then browse for a custom icon of your own for your window title bar area and for your application. And It's a kind of a really great feature, but we're just going to leave it off for now. You'll find that a lot of the time it's just easier to build your applications faster. If you're experienced with building icons and whatnot though, you may want to really look at that feature and add your own icons. Okay, in the style area here, this is where we get to add our custom mask and this is what's really exciting. You see we've got a standard style. Okay, that's a standard window style, such as this dialog here that I'm moving. It's got a title bar, maximize button, etc. Uh, the next style is a bordered style, and that would be a window without a title bar, but with the border still. And flat would be without either. So I encourage you to just go through these different options, kiosk, flat, bordered, and standard, and try them out and see what they do for you. The kiosk mode is actually a full screen mode where you can set the matte color as well. So it's really nice. You've got a lot of different options, and you can, you can really unleash a lot of power for your projects. In the custom mask area here, we're going to go ahead and check that. We're going to leave the fit to window option checked and we're going to go ahead and surf here and find a custom mask for our window. That's going to make our application window a custom shape. So let's go to our highest level of our gallery here and select the window masks folder. And in here if I scroll through these images with my arrow key You'll see we've got some really great shapes in here, fish and bird and some really exciting stuff. And your application window can be made to fit to these shapes. You can make any shape you like. 
in any image editor and just export it as a black and white shape image like that and load it up here and create custom shaped applications. It's really powerful. Um, in this case we're going to select 63022 shaped like a cloud. It kind of matches our background. And Then we'll pr press OK and we'll take a look at the last option here and then preview our project. In the taskbar area you've got taskbar options. You can set a standard taskbar icon which is what I'm going to leave mine at or you can set it to be hidden or minimize the system tray. So again I encourage you to fool around with these and see whether they work good for your projects and what applications they work good for. Okay so we've set up our application here with a custom size with a custom mask and a custom title. So let's press OK and you'll see our application window now reflects the custom mask that we've added and the custom size. So let's go ahead and preview our project by pressing F5 and then I'm going to minimize this application actually in the process. And as you can see here our application has started and you might not be able to hear it but there's background music playing in the background here and it's pretty exciting to see this. I mean it, we we did it in just a couple minutes and the impact of an application like this for your clients, for yourself, it's just incredible. So if we move around our application a bit here, you'll see that it is truly transparent with nice clean edges and as we move it over top of things, they fit right along the edge there. So that's a look at project settings. I don't know about you, but I find this kind of stuff to be terribly exciting. <laughs> and let's move on to the next lesson.